Oh my goodness. First there's Laura and the viola, so beautiful. That song was marvelous. And then you bring oh, Christopher Robin. And, and the gifts just don't stop because, wait a minute, hold on a minute, guys. You, you're going to love this just a minute ago. I'm going to have some, I'm gonna have some friends join me today on stage. Thank you, Bridget. Look who's joining us. It's, it's Pooh Bear and Tigger. And, and little piglet is at the stairs. Well, there they are. <laughs> Our special guest for the day. Uh, wow. Yeah, that's perfect because la the last, our last week with the, the wisdom, the metaphysics of Winnie the Pooh. Hello, Pooh Bear. That's cool. All right, so be of very little brain. The key to happiness, the key to well-being for all of us really is to be in that space of the, the very little brain. It seems to be perhaps counterintuitive because we talk about the power that knows all and the wisdom that knows all and, and God is all there is, and that's absolutely true. But the other thing that's, that we want to realize is that there's so much going on from free will in our brains that sometimes it can be just a little bit clouded, a little bit crowded. So perhaps we should be a little more like poo and take it slow. Pooh's very much like the, like the big wide river. It's not in much of a hurry, and it knows what its destination is, so it just floats along doing its thing, you know? And that's one of the joys of being in this poo place. It, it doesn't know, it, it shall get there. It understands that, you know? And also, it ties into some ancient wisdom as well. There's that line in, in Matthew 18.3 uh, where it says, truly I tell you, unless you change, and become as little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven, unless you change. So it's already assuming that, we have a, that we've gone past that, that we need to get back to that place and to bring that kingdom of heaven into our lives. Dr. Holmes talks about it all the time. He talks about having that, that fire in the belly to bring the kingdom of heaven into your life, to bring an experience of joy into, your, into, your, into the everyday life itself. And that, that really comes from having that, that uncluttered brain, that beginner's brain that, that, that Patrick was so wonderful helping us to understand, to take that funnel and open ourselves up with that 360 view that, that Johanna anchored in her uh, meditation this morning. There's a lovely book that Dr. Holmes wrote called The Seminar Lectures. It's actually a transcription of the very first uh, retreat. The first retreat was not, as many people think, at a Silomar. The first retreat was in the Sierra Nevada at a high resort there, and he did lectures every single day. And those lectures were then put into a book called The Seminar Lectures. And in it, he talks about we have to keep, we have to keep our minds open at the top for a new influx of wisdom. And many times when people hear this idea that Dr. Holmes speaks about of being open at the top, they talk about, yes, we should be open to new philosophies, new ideas, uh, new wisdom, the latest science, the latest developments that come along and incorporate those into science of mind. And that is one of the aspects that he was talking about. But the other aspect he was talking about is this poo brain thing that we're talking about today. Having that simpler mind, being open to, tagging the opportunity to just stop and look and listen with the intuitive mind to what is actually true and applying those truisms to our lives. There's something it absolutely knows. But many times we just don't know. I mean, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm on my way to the grocery store, I'm driving to the grocery store, and I'm already in the store. I haven't even gotten there yet. I'm already going through my list, figuring out how I can get through fast enough, and if there'll be, and, and, then, and then also envisioning, using my imagination to set my vision on the idea that there will be only one person in the line with a checker, live checker. <laughs> because I, I have this thing about the auto machines. Now, Johanna has helped me to get better with using the auto machines. <laughs> but I have this belief it's taking away someone's job. But the person uh, that works the job, uh, uh, Angie, who works that auto checker, says, no, 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 I have to be here, so I still am working. It has not taken my job away, except now she's in charge of six checkers instead of one. But hey, I digress. See, in the middle of my talk, my mind is already cluttered <laughs> with the thoughts of the checker at the grocery store, and I'm not even at the store. Sometimes we're driving there, and we get there, and we don't even realize how we got there because we're just so full of stuff. Pooh talks about this. He says, if the person you are talking to, if the person you are talking to 
doesn't appear to be listening, be patient. It may be that he has a small piece of fluff in his ear. <laughs> Frequently we do have fluff in our ears. Mommy told me this, daddy told me that. At school I learned how to do this. Last week this happened to me and it happened to me two weeks before. It happened to me a year before that and that's still in my mind. We have so much fluff in our brains that it becomes very hard for us to move forward into the simpleness of life, into that joyous experience of life. But great thing is there is grace. There is grace. There is the infinite that is always ready to bring us the new idea to open ourselves up to something beyond what we've already experienced before. Understanding that at the time, we were doing the best that we can. You know, we're doing the best we can with the information we have at the time. The beautiful thing is we're always available to new information. As long as we get the fluff out of our ears, as long as we keep our minds open. See, we're not as smart as we think, but we're smarter than we know. There's another lovely book the Tao of Pooh, sweet book. In it, uh, Pooh and, and Benjamin Huff are having a conversation. And, and Pooh says in this, he says, mistakes are made or imagined by man. The creature with the overloaded brain who separates himself from the supporting network of natural laws by interfering and trying too hard. Sometimes we just try way too hard. We get in the way of the divine flow. What does Emerson say? Get your bloated nothingness out of the way of the divine circuit. You know, let's get our full brains out of the way of the divine circuit sometimes. That's why we meditate. That's why we do spiritual practice. That's why we see practitioners, because we can just get clogged up with information. It can just be mental gridlock up there, right? And so sometimes we need a traffic cop, and a, trans a, a practitioner is a lovely traffic cop, right? Meditation is a wonderful stoplight to the thoughts that are flowing through our brains. This is why we talk about these kinds of practices. And it does work if we can get out of that space, if we can stop trying too hard. There was this beautiful um, Buddhist monastery that was built across from a powerful waterfall. I mean, this waterfall had such drop to it that anybody who got caught in the rush of the bottom of this waterfall you know, not happening, not going to survive. One day, one of the Buddhist monks is sitting there me meditating, and he sees an old guy at the top of the falls, and be amazed, the guy jumps off the falls. And the monk, with his passion and his deep compassion for all life, tried to hold out a high hope, but really expected to race to the pool at the bottom of the waterfall and to pull this old man's body out of the water. But he gets there, and what does he discover? He sees that the man just kind of swims to the shore and climbs out. He says, how did you do that? How did you survive that? He says, because I yielded to a superior power. I survived because I don't struggle against a superior power. Now, sometimes in our thinking, in our human way of doing things, we get that bloated nothingness right in the way and we start to struggle against a higher power. There's an urge, we, got, we all had it, that hunch that we, that we do not follow, that we betray ourselves about a deep-seated belief that we know is right, but the things that we were told tell us we should do something different, so we do that other thing, and then later it's like, oh, why did I do that? Because we put the bloated nothingness first, because we got the fluff in our ears, because we didn't do the be of little brain thing and slow down a little bit, you see. We didn't understand that there is this higher power that we are connected to, and our job is to train our minds to train our consciousness to know that we can indeed get the fluff out of our own ears. To understand that there is a spiritual presence always available to guide us, to help control conditions, to comfort us, and to heal us through the aches and the pains of life. How many of us, last couple of weeks, first response was to go to prayer? Johanna and I, when we're driving down the road, if we see a, a fire engine or police cars zipping by, lights flared, code four, first thing we do, blessings, blessings. We put prayer out there, you know? So we understand that this, this presence is here and always available to us. In fact, it's closer than our very breath because it is us. We are that divine expression. That's the beautiful thing about science of mind. 
Thanksgiving dinner over at Kabirdis' brother's family's house. Uh, we were talking with one, one, one of his brothers, and we were having this wonderful discussion about faith, you know? And there was a Seventh day Adventist minister there, too, and we were having this great discussion about it, and he was all, all into it. He was like, so, so you really believe that, that you are an expression of God itself? Yes. And, and so you don't believe in, 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 in sin? No. Really? It was twisting their brain, but they wanted to hear more because this idea is so freeing that God is perfection, that God is love, that God is wholeness, that God is completeness, and that God allows us to experience that as we align ourselves with it. That's our job, to sit with that sense of connection. In a little book, a little book like this then, it's called a, a, a practical, what is it called? A practical, Holmes Reader on Practical Wisdom. That's what it is. He says, there is always more energy than you have ever used, more creative thoughts than you have ever known, more vitality than you have ever drawn upon. We have that. We have that more available to us. But if we're filled up, you know, it's not going to work. If I want to give you 20 bucks and your hand is like this, you're not going to get the 20 bucks. You've got to open up. You've got to open up to receive the more. You've got to open up to use more than you've ever used. You've got to drop a couple of things to know more than you've ever known. You have to relax a little bit to draw on this power of vitality that's available to us. And that's what Pooh does. They're so easy. They're just, they're taking it simple, you know? There's this, there's this one story where, where Pooh is trying to, to open a, a jar you know, Piglet's trying to open the jar. He can't get it open. He hands it to Pooh, and, and Pooh just, and it pops open. And, and, and Tigger says, how did you do that? He says, oh, it's simple. You just twist as hard as you can, and once you get that far, you take a breath. That's emptying, right? You release the breath, and then you twist, and it opens. Tigger says, oh, I could do that. I could do that. Where's it? He grabs a jar of pickles that's full, and, and Piglet's going, I don't know, Tigger. Maybe you shouldn't do that. Oh, it's easy. He just he twists, and he does his Tigger style, and <laughs> drops the jar, and the pickles are all over the floor, you know, because he just knows so much that he could just do so much. He didn't take that pause to just breathe a little bit first. He didn't step into the things he didn't know or step into that vitality of, and drawn on energy. He just tried to do it all for himself, you see. But sometimes we have to open to the presence, and that's where the beauty of imagination and intuition comes in. We're the only creatures that have that, you know, that have this thing of imagination. A lot of folks have, the, a lot of creatures have the intuition. It's called instinct. For us, instinct is intuition become conscious right we get the instinctive feeling and then we recognize we had the instinctive feeling and then we can act on it how beautiful is that that we just don't have to automatically respond to our instinct we can determine and discern whether the instinctive feeling is truly intuition or if it's an old idea coming to roost if it's a fluff in the ear a little piece of cotton getting in the way of the divine flow no we can choose you see we can be in tune and let things work because the surest way to a tense, awkward, confused way of life is to try too hard and to think too much. You're absolutely ready for a NyQuil or an Advil or an ibuprofen. If you think too hard, you're going to get confused. It's going to be awkward. You're going to be tense. But if you relax a little bit, things get a little easier. Oh, oh, this is, I'm glad you guys are here because I was going to read from the book today. I didn't know my guests were going to be showing up. I love this story of the, of the Eeyore's birthday party. This really tells, this tells it so, so well about this idea of trying too hard, thinking too much, and supposed to letting the divine circuit guide and letting things flow into our lives. See, here it is. Pooh discovered, of course, after Eeyore told him, that it was Eeyore's birthday. So Pooh decided to give him something. He went home to get a jar of honey to use as a birthday present. And then he talked things over with Piglet, who decided to give Eeyore a balloon that he had saved from a party of his own. Well, Piglet went off to get the balloon, and, po and Pooh walked off to Eeyore's house with the jar of honey. But after a while, what happened to Pooh? He got hungry! Because <laughs> Pooh is what? He's, uh, he's, he's so open, he's always hungry. It's already, remember, it's all, always five minutes to 11, and he likes to eat at 11, right? So he sat down, he took off the, the top off of his jar of honey. How lucky I am that I brought this with me, he thought. 
Many a bear go out on a warm day like this would never have thought of bringing a little something with them, and he began to eat. Now let me see, he thought, as he took his last lick inside the jar, where was I going? (laughs) Oh, yes, yes, Eeyore's. So he got up very slowly, and then he suddenly remembered he had eaten Eeyore's birthday present. Well, most of it anyway. Fortunately, he still had the jar, and since he was passing by the 100-acre wood, he went to see Owl and had Owl write a happy birthday on the jar. After all, it was a nice jar, even with nothing in it. While all this was happening, Piglet had gone back to his own house to get Eeyore's balloon. He held it tightly against himself so that it shouldn't blow away, and he ran as fast as he could because he wanted to get to Eeyore's before Pooh did. You see, he thought that if he was the first one to give a present, just as if he thought of it without being told by anybody, that he would get some kudos for that, right? He'd run it along, thinking how pleased Eeyore would be. He didn't look where he was going, and he suddenly put his foot in a rabbit hole, fell down on his flat on his face, and bang goes the balloon. Yes, well, after Piglet fell on Eeyore's balloon, it wasn't so, well, it was more like, well, it was kind of not a balloon anymore. So now we get to the party. Piglet hands Eeyore the, he tells Eeyore what he's bringing him, and Eeyore says, balloon? You did say balloon. One of those big colored things you blow up? Gaiety, song, dance, here we are, there we are? Uh, yes, yes, but I'm afraid. I'm, I'm very sorry, Eeyore, but when I was running along to bring it to you, I fell down. Dear, 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 how unlucky. You ran too fast, I expect. You didn't hurt yourself, little piglet. N- n- no, but I, uh, Eeyore, I, I burst the balloon. There was a long silence. My balloon? <laughs> My birthday balloon? Yes, Eeyore. (laughs) Here it is, with many happy returns of the day. And he gave Eeyore a small piece of hanging damp rubber. (laughs) Is this it? My present. The balloon. Just then, Pooh arrived. I brought you a little present, Pooh said with excitement. I've had it, said Eeyore thinking about the, p- the balloon. Pooh had now splashed across the stream to Eeyore, and Piglet was sitting a little way off by himself with his paws kind of sniffling. Pooh says, it's a useful pot. Here it is. It's got a very happy birthday with love from Pooh written on it. That's what all that writing is. And it's for putting things in. There. Then Eeyore discovered that since the balloon was no longer as big as Piglet, it could easily be put away in the useful pot and take it out whenever it was needed, which certainly can't be done with a typical unmanageable balloon. I'm very glad, said Pooh happily, that I thought of giving you a useful pot to th- put things in. I'm very glad too, said Piglet, that I thought of giving you something to put in a useful pot. <laughs> but Eeyore wasn't listening. He was taking the balloon out and putting it back again, just as happy as can be. I love that story. Here, you guys. Here, read to yourselves. You see, there's this connection available to all of us, and if we can open ourselves up to it, we can, we can turn any kind of situation into something useful. We can take even a burst balloon, that, that happiness and that joy that <laughs> explodes, when we can just tune in to the divine flow, we can move that into something useful and make people feel good about it, you see. But that all comes from having our openness to the presence, from having that, that, that space of empty brain, of li- very little brain, of a very calm, serene way of being, to not be in such a rush, to be like the wide river that knows where its destination is. And in our teaching, the destination is good, it's flowing with love. It's out picturing with law. Dr. Holmes says in that wonderful reader, your endeavor is not so much to find God as it is to realize God's presence and to understand that this presence is always with you. See, there's always something with us at every moment. And it flows with us that much faster 
when we're working with an uncrowded mind, uncrowded with ideas, getting the fluff out, staying open at the top, open at the top to the influx of new thoughts and new ideas, to being at peace with what is. Sometimes it's so challenging. We want to struggle with the conditions of the moment, but what we can do through our teaching is perhaps not change exactly the condition. The balloon didn't blow up. The pot wasn't full of honey, but to change the responses to the conditions is what Eeyore showed us. Hey, Okay, I got, a, I got a balloon that's not full, but it fits into the pot. If we can open ourselves up to those situations, we can see how some of the situations that we've predefined, predefined because we're already at the grocery store while we're still just driving there, if we can open ourselves up, we can get beyond all of that by knowing that there's a power available to us. See, we must remember, and not just proclaim this truth of the God's presence. It's not just to proclaim it, but we must prove it. We must prove that there is a power. There is a power within us. And more than anything else, we need to love and create, to be whole and happy, and unite with others in bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. And of all of these, of all the points on this quote right here, yes, create love, be loving, and create with that, and be whole and be happy. But the thing that's really calls me to this quote is this last part, unite with others in bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. Our teaching for so long has been about manifesting the right partnership, getting the right job, finding the right place to live, you know, healing our individual experience of life. But there's a call, and, and, and the universe is telling us about it. These things like the borderline shooting, these things like these fires, people losing their whole town of paradise gone, a town called paradise gone. Don't do that. A town called paradise gone. It's time that we unite with others using our teaching, our powerful connection to the divine, that free flow of spirit that's moving within us together to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. And it begins by being, sweetly, a very little mind. And so it is. You guys come, come join me for prayer, fellas. Bing, bing, bing. So let's do our affirmation. I possess a beginner's mind through which I partner with a co-creative power leading to loving expressions and great experiences in this thing called life. It's a beautiful thing. All right. So here's our time for prayer where we get to use that, that divine influx of infinite wisdom and power to draw on something that we've, that's bigger than we've ever known to express through love and to create through law together in harmony, in unity, in a group as one. We shall bring the kingdom of heaven to those that are in our hearts and minds at this moment. So if you have someone that you want to call for prayer, if there's a situation that you'd like to let the vibrational energy of the universe bring to healing moments, speak that word into the room right now as we pray together. And so it is. Here we go. taking a moment to come from the silence, from the font of infinite wisdom, from the still point of divine creativity, from the womb of all that becomes through the power and presence of spirit. I speak this word of truth on behalf of each and every one of us, knowing that we are all divine. At our very core, we are all perfect. The very beingness of who we are is complete. The experience of life brings wholeness to all. It is so from this truth and the understanding of this truth that we tap into a power greater than we are that we can use. A love more expansive than we can ever imagine that we can draw upon. And a law immutable and ever present that hears our call and answers our prayer. 
right now in this moment. For in infinity, everything already exists. So what we call for in prayer is already an idea and a reality in the mind of God. And through our acceptance, through our imagination, through our feeling, we bring it into existence. So we open our hearts and our minds in this moment as we envision divine right action, harmonious relationships, prosperity and abundance, overflowing with pleasures and treasures for all. We simply know that good and good alone outflows from our consciousness into experience and into expression as we put our imagination to intuition, to attention and intention, and then allow it to instruct a law that is always listening to bring about the perfect resolutions to all concerns and all worries to evaporate them, for we know that God does not sit with concern. God does not express in worry. God expresses in love and joy and peace and harmony and well-being. And so it is from this moment on that any word we have spoken is already being seen and expressed and realized in time and space. And for, great, for the gratitude of knowing this, we just sit in joy as we release this prayer to that perfect law by saying, and so it is. Mm -hmm.